Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. It's time for the next battle in the greatest touring car driver ever super tournament. Paul Radisic versus Ivan Muller, the New Zealander versus the Frenchman. Just make sure you know how this thing works. Each week I am going to present an argument for both drivers. Then you leave a comment for who you think is better. They go on to the next round and so on and so forth until the final. If you haven't checked out the first battle, make sure you do. We have Bern Schneider versus Colin Turkington. Watch the video and leave a comment for your favourite. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single matchup or any of the other content on this channel. So let's begin with a New Zealand touring car star, Paul Radisic, who like so many began his career in single seaters, probably with dreams of reaching Formula One. Radisic would only get as far as Formula Three and a win in the New Zealand Grand Prix in 1988, but he would have a lot more success in touring cars. It all started with drives in the Benson and Hedges 500 and World Touring Cars in 1987. He partnered Denny Holm in the first and Ludwig Finier in the second, both in a BMW 325i and performed well in both. He'd get sporadic touring car drives through to the early 90s, mostly in New Zealand, but he did make a debut in the British Touring Cars in the Endurance Round, partnering Lawrence Bristow and his magnificent moustache in a Labatt Ford Sierra. He joined Sport in 1993 with the new Ford Mondeo not ready to make its debut in the British Touring Cars at the start of the year. They were always going to be at a disadvantage, but Radicic took three wins on his way to third in the championship despite missing seven races. He was only 53 points off Joachim Winkelhock, who won the title, which means an average fourth place finish at the rounds he missed would have made Paul Radicic champion. Not bad for a first real attempt at touring cars. More importantly, he lined up in the World Touring Car Cup of 1993, a championship that was only held for a few years, featuring the best names touring cars had to offer, and Radicic won both races and took the crown, ahead of some absolute gods of motorsport, and Slim Borgard. He'd win the World Crown again in 1994, as well as taking another third place finish and two wins in the 1994 British Touring Cars, but this is where things started to take a turn for the worst. The Ralph Sport Ford Mondeo was not as competitive in 1995. Radisic took a single win at Silverstone and dropped to 10th in the championship. And even as Ford dropped Ralph Sport for 1996, the Mondeo kept dropping down the field with Radisic not doing better than a 5th place at Brands Hatch and 13th in the championship. The situation did not improve in 1997 with similar results and for that year's Bathurst 1000, the first one of 1997, for there were two, Radicic turned up in a Peugeot, and in 1998 moved to the Peugeot team in the BTCC also. He promptly dropped to 14th in the standings and left the British Touring Cars with just 6 wins and 2 bronze medals. For 1999, Paul Radicic moved back to Australia and took 8 wins over the next few years with a best 4th in the championship. He did win the V8 Supercar Challenge 2 years in a row, so we can determine that Radicic is especially good at race series with very few races. He continued in the V8 supercars for a few more years, but did not have any more success and he retired after 2008. He has been seen as lately as the 2021 TCR New Zealand Touring Car Championship, but being the managing director of an oil company, he is kind of busy these days. If you judge Radisic on championships won, then he'd most definitely lose most comparisons but it can't be discounted that he won the World Touring Car Cup against some of the best drivers in the world two years running. If it wasn't for missing half of the 1993 British Touring Car season and Alfa Romeo kind of cheating in 1994, Radicic could have very easily won two championships. Now onto Ivan Muller, who also had pretensions of reaching Formula 1 and even made it into the International F3000 series with Omega Land. He only scored a couple of points and moved on to touring cars. Moving to the French Touring Car Championship in a BMW for 1994 and finishing third in his first year. He'd also finished seventh in the World Cup. Improving on both championships in 1995, Ivan Muller won the French Touring Cars and finished fourth at the World Cup before moving to Italy in 1996, finishing fourth overall in an Audi. He'd stick with Audi for a few years, moving to the Super Touring Wagen Cup for 1997 before taking a first season in the British Touring Cars. Audi, however, were on the way out. So despite some good performances, Muller ended up at Vauxhall for 1999 and wouldn't leave Vauxhall until he himself left the series. 
He took his first win in 1999 with one of the best overtakes in racing history and he won a few more in 2000. In 2001, with the BTCC being a very different place and Vauxhall the only car capable of winning, it was between Muller and his teammate Jason Plato. Plato won and promptly left the series. So in 2002, it became a straight fight between Muller and teammate James Thompson. Muller would lose again in 2002, but came back and turned it around in 2003 before losing again in 2004. His final year in the BTCC was spent battling Matt Neal, which Ivan Muller would lose again, but in his last five BTCC years, he finished in the top two in all, but only took one championship. In 2006, he moved to World Touring Cars with Sayat. It take 10 wins and a championship in 2008, before four years with Chevrolet, which saw three more championships and 27 wins. Three years with Citroen saw more wins, but three runner-ups in the championship behind Jose Maria Lopez. Ivan Muller then retired for a year, before coming back because golf is really, really boring. Now in the World Touring Car Cup, first with Hyundai and now Lynx & Co. Ivan Muller has been a top contender and has won more races. In the last 21 years, he has only finished outside the top three twice. So there is no doubting he is one of the most successful drivers in touring cars history, but will that be enough to convince you he is the greatest? So there are the arguments for Paul Radisic and Ivan Muller. Is the success in the World Touring Car Cup enough to convince you that Radisic is best? He did beat Ivan Muller in both races, but clearly some bad career decisions were involved in his career and a great driver maybe didn't have the success he should have. Or will you vote for the many championships Ivan Muller has won and the success his legacy is leaving behind? Even his nephew is a world champion, so perhaps that will be enough to secure passage to the quarterfinal. Leave your vote in the comments below, make sure you go back and watch the Turkington vs Schneider video and leave a vote there as well. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next battle or any other content on this channel. If you're a fan of motorsport then Front Runner Motorsport is the channel for you. Leave a like and tell your friends. Thank you for watching and have a good one.